this is uh, Peter Moles and, and Alan Roscoe. And I'm Arthur Roberts, and we're in the boardroom of, of uh, VICC in, in uh, the, the com computer building in Warrington Road. And we had before us an absolute treasure in that we've got a history of the origins of, of BICC, British Insulated Wire Company in 1890 to 1914, and it's written by a man named S.P. Dudley. And it, within it, and I say it's a treasure, and it really is, it, it, it is a concise uh, description of the way the, thing, the place developed from, from its, its very inception. And, and uh, our friend here has, has uh, been able to pick this up, and, uh, and it's a treasure to him, isn't it? Well, yes, actually, I've never seen this before. Yeah. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen it before, so I don't. Know, I don't know whether it was in a paperback form or otherwise. But it's very detailed. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we've got Jacob Atherton. That's right. We talking mention about. of the, the founder, J. J. B. Atherton. Jacob Atherton is mentioned as as managing director too. This is Ninety-nine years lease from King's College, Cambridge. Ah, now that's of is a large true. plot of land close to Prescott Railway Station. That's right. An arrangement was made on the 3rd of January 1891 for immediate possession of the land. When King's College Cambridge was founded, uh, most of the, this area, uh, uh, the, the land was given yeah. to King Henry VI. And he no, founded it? King's College Cambridge. Yeah. And that's why the grammar school... Well, land, strong which ties is, are which is, Yes. yes in fact, school, the, the, the gift of, of, of the living of Prescott Church is in the yes. hands of King's College Cambridge. Yes. Well, Arthur, here we've got um, a photograph, an aerial photograph, taken in, I can't get the date exact, but I believe it's about 1976. Mm -hmm. And we can recognise that from the point of view that the M57 is built, um, the main continuous casting rolling mill, which is here, uh, was finished in about 1970, back end of 74, mm -hmm. and we hadn't built the extra bay on the tank house. Electrolytic tank house, which wasn't um, which wasn't built until about seventy nine. Mm -hmm. But if we if we look at this and compare with what's happened today, and we just go through it, we are actually in this building here at this moment in time, in what was the computer block and is now headquarters for Energy Cables and Metals Division, Middleton House, where many of us have associations yes, of, of you certain. of you working and me eating <laughs> yes, um, yeah. and then if we come the old construction site yes. behind it where i finished yeah and then if we come across the road the the old foundry for the accessories division um the accessories division as it was in in this block of buildings here um the main office block uh, here yes. and the other side with the uh, diesel engine house here, the old export which we were talking about and right. in the old days before the big road links, the rail link used to go into the factory and in fact all the way through okay. if, we, if, if we wanted it to. Under Bridge Road. Under Bridge Road, yeah. that's right. That's right. Uh, the wire mill uh, in this sort of area with, uh, in those days in 76 with number one mill still just running and number four mill just finishing and being replaced by this, but the wire mill uh, still running, uh, eventually to close in about 1978. Uh, aluminium uh, overhead line conductor was still being made in this area of the aluminium, and of course today that's gone to Nosley, yes. new factory in Nosley yes. called Palco these days. Houses. BCR was, yeah. was, was, was running at that time with the, with the anode casting and in 76 I think we'd just, yeah a few years previously we'd stopped casting wire bars um, but we were still casting anodes for the electrolytic refinery. Um, so that was the, the refinery building which of course closed in 1991 right. and is the grassy area which you, yeah, which, I, I you, which, you, yeah. which you now see. That's right. Uh, the Imperial, the pub which is still oh, standing, yes. Bert Green there, license that's, seat. that's right, yeah. and then if we go to the sort of south side of the site, the old sheet mill, um, and alongside it the Pyrotanax buildings for mm -hmm. mineral insulated cable, and then over the way not yet built, which you can't see on this photograph, is the new mineral insulated cable section, which ironically is in the sheet mill. Yeah. It's been refurbished, but yeah. it's in the sheet yeah. mill. Yeah. Uh, the electrolytic uh, 
uh, tank house, which which it was shut down at the same time as the as the BCR because that fed it. Yeah. Telephone cable factory, mm -hmm. which has now become BICC Components, mm -hmm. which is the old accessories division. Mm -hmm. So that really has gone from there to there. And the telephone cable, which that used was originally built for, yeah. when was that built, Alan? 50, 56, 57? Thereabouts. Thereabouts. And that's gone to Connolly's at Blakely mm -hmm. now. It's and, interesting. And the rolling mill at the end. Interesting to see the development there over a period of time. The, the APD, the accessories division, used to be the EFT. EFT, yeah. That's, uh, yes, I that's remember right. my brother joining, right. joining the company and working with Eric the, Duncan was one of the right. famous the EFD general the managers of... Electro fitting department. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. Uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's a so it's, uh, that, that, I think that is really, um, that picture is virtually this site uh, at the height of its uh, number of buildings yeah. um, that, that were there. You wouldn't know the acreage, could you? 168, I think. Is it? Yeah. yeah. 168 acres. Yeah. 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 Quite the size of the factory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, very sizable. Of course. Very sizable. It, it, it was Prescott. Yeah. Yes, it was. And yes, people it coming was. coming into the town today, and I mean, uh, relatives of mine and everybody else's, are, are astounded that the thing is so uh, that it has just disappeared. It really, I mean, the, the process of development is, you, you can really see it. I mean, it started sort of, in the, the oldest buildings were sort of in this area. Yeah, yeah. You with me? That's right. And then it expanded towards that way. Yeah. And then, of course, well, I'm sorry, the oldest buildings were here, weren't they? Right. 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 Of the photographs that right. yeah. you showed us. And yeah. then it expanded really on this north side. Yes. Um, and then, because BCR was running in the 30s, wasn't it? BCR was running in the 30s, so, uh, and this was sort of 50s. That's right. This 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 sort of area, and then this the the, the tank house was 60s, yeah. Yeah. and the rolling mill was 70s. That's right. That's right. Um, and the new mineral insulated cables unit here is sort of 80s. 80s yeah. One of the features so, of, the, of the BCR that I remember vividly was the the, the very uh, long tree trunks that were used yeah. for, 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 for polling. That's right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And they used to come up by, by vehicle from, from that's the, right. the docks. That's right, that's right. But uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a picture of historical significance. It, it certainly is. It, 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 it's one of the most graphic things that I, I think I've seen in a long time. Okay. That do? Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, this photograph, Arthur, is... Uh, is a more recent one which may be of interest. It is, in fact, of Harold Wilson when he was Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And he is on the, with the white helmet at the front of the picture. And, in fact, it's the day when he opened, formally opened, the new rod rolling mill, which Peter Moles yeah. talked about earlier. Yeah. The mill had been in operation for some months before its formal opening, which I think was 1976. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, it was the day, the final day, that Mr Wilson was the Prime Minister. Mm. And he opened the mill on that same day, mm -hmm. and that's a photograph of him doing just that. Mm -hmm. I can tell the, the stamps. Uh, yes. I, mean, I, 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 I wouldn't say I could recognise. No, I think a little bit difficult with them with the stamp behind it on, but yeah. uh, yes, the stamps and then the hand wave. Yeah. About you being born in the uh, yeah. behind. Mm. What was the same uh, as the stamps that uh, brought us about? Eh? What was the same as that brought you being born in the behind about? My father was a uh, caretaker and timekeeper. Was caretaker uh, and timekeeper. You got paid for being a caretaker, but you didn't. Yeah. You got paid for being a timekeeper, but you didn't get paid for being yeah. a caretaker. Yeah. That's amazing. Is this the? Uh, is this the, That's the, the flat on, on this postcard where? That's it. Where it all happened. That's where it all happened. Yeah. In this top top uh, the flat, flat here. Going up there and up the stairs. Now that's down, the other's down now, are you? The new one's down as well yeah. now. We just turn it to the uh, to the video so we can... Yeah.
And uh, how, how long did your, your uh, dad work there for? Work? I don't know. I couldn't tell you, really. I don't know. How long it was there? Mm -hmm. How old was you when you left there? Six. Six I was when we left the... Yeah. Oh, uh, mm, I got it like that. You, you know when you went, uh, <laughs> you went back working in the BI, what age was you went when you went work, working back? Fourteen. And you don't have to be born then, and stay in there Yeah, I was only fourteen. Six. I first started at fourteen, yeah. Did you have any intentions of going back there? Do you think you would have went back there, like? Well, I suppose everybody went back to BI in them days for working, you know, everybody worked at BI more or less. So you wasn't away from there for many years? No, you? no. And you, what I think's great, I believe the, uh, the BI Hooter has, has an uh, interesting history. The Hooter? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It came off I a ship. I believe it came off uh, a ship, yeah. Maybe right. the Isle of Man boats, you know, one of the old Isle of Man boats. Yeah. We used to always have one. I used to go with Isle of Man a lot, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, the BI's got a lot of history in regards to the sea, anyway. Yeah, they used to love going there, the man. I believe it's op it was operated by steam, wasn't it? This, this, uh, oh, aye, steam. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Ah, I think they put it on electric after, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I tell you what I thought was good, I mean, it's really captured imagination. But you, you said, uh, I think we'll get that little photograph again. We can find it. What are you looking for? The one under the curse? When, when you're a little kid. Oh! Anyway, but uh, you say about your dad used to lift you up. Ah, uh, dad used to lift me up for brother, but you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, he used to lift me up for brother, but he used to. He used to watch the clock on the wall. Get on time. Low, pull it, pull, come, pull. <laughs> is this for knocking off and that? Ah. Uh, for knocking off, is that? Knocking off, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, can you remember what time would have that have been? Oh, I can never, I can't remember what time it was now. <coughs> yeah. I can imagine that. It'd be like out of a Lowry, uh, hmm? it'd be out of a, like, like out of a Lowry painting, all, all the works all coming out. That's right, yeah. yeah clock, clock that's 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 it's been really interesting for yes. this story. Yeah. It needed to be told. That's and, uh, it did to be, yeah. yeah. You, you, oh, you'll uh, go down into you? the archives of uh, Prescott. Yeah. After a, life, a lifetime of hard graft. Hector Stanley will forgive me if I refer to him as an old Prescott character. It's time to have a chat with him. I've known you, Hector, a long time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You were telling me before that you nearly, you nearly caught up with me as far as age is concerned. Yeah. And you mentioned, too, that, we were, uh, that when you first came into this area, you were opposite. Was that an old Tom Mays' shop? Uh, that was, yeah. Uh, that was the food shop. That's right. Madison Street. Tom and Madison. Yeah. Uh, well, originally uh, owned by old Tom Mays. Uh, Ace. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Madison married Ace. He did. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And then further along, um, before we get to the Pappas, there was Taylor's and Dairy. Yes, yeah. before the end, right, Taylor's, yeah. and then there was the Palace, yeah. and there was Papa Lyles. Yes, and then on, on the other side of that, uh, and there was a chippy. Ah, and then chip shop, there. yeah. And then there was a sewing machine shop. That's right. A sewing, single That's sewing right. machine. That's right. And then there was uh, the little shop where you went down the end, to the yeah. sweet shop. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then there was Hatton as a butcher. Yeah. Right. 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 before that, uh, but before all those shops you mentioned, there was Joe Pratt's uh, tailor's shop. That's, that's going back a long time. I, I can barely remember it. Tailor's? He was a tailor. Joe, Joe Pratt, he was on the council. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know him through the country. Yes. yes. But uh, I, 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 I'm particularly interested in tailor's shop because there were two people on my world. One was named Williams and he used to deliver milk. Oh, yes, and the other person was uh, uh, Taylor's daughter who married Walter Perry. That's right, and yes, Walter Perry. was a, a policeman somewhere in East Lancashire. That's right, yes, Walter Perry, yeah. Well, so far as your, your shop is concerned, I, I mean, I, I've known you, as I say, uh, most of my life. Uh, and uh, you've always been an enterprising sort of bloke. Oh, did you, didn't you uh, have connections with Tom? Yes, I married Thomas. I, I, I thought you did. Thomas yes. was the shop. Thomas was the, the shop the further up. And, and next door was, before Lyons Cake Shop yes, was Thomas and Hubert Thomas. Oh. He went down south. Oh. Oh. Down in Brown. What did he do? He, he, they had uh, cakes. Yeah. 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 And then Lyons took it over, didn't they? Lyons. Well, they do, of course, we're going to be hoping to have a word with Sandy and I and so on. So, uh, 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 yeah, well, they, uh, that's right, that was a fact of this. Look, Earth, 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 Ear
That's right, right. because Sandy Lyon uh, is father lived in Wisdom. Yes, 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 yes,
spirit back into the shop uh, and it's very much become a sort of social service centre as well. Uh, you know, people want to know who's died and when the funeral is, um, um, how Mrs. Such a Body is down the road, which is which is lovely and this is part of the community shop and this is what we're delighted with that this spirit has come back into the shop. And that ties up with, with the efforts that the town and, and the churches are, are making. That's right, that's yeah, precisely I, I, so. I, I think that, that's a good thing. And we yeah. try to carry it on in the shop. Yes, uh, we've, we've extended the range of merchandise that the shop sells, yes. um, which seems to have gone down well with people, and obviously made a lot of alterations in the shop. Well, you've had to, of course. Um, yes, since we came in. Yeah. Uh, lots of people have said that. It's all very nicely laid out. Oh yes, it is. It's very much so. Yes. Yeah. Well, we've got cards. I, saw, I noticed um, that as I came in. Yes. Probably the cheapest in the town. Uh -huh. Well, probably so. Um, there's there's lots more we could sell. Lots more stock that we've been asked for, yeah. but um, unfortunately, a lack of space. Yeah, but yeah. by and large, it's very nice to see the little shop uh, functioning as it was intended sure. to, sure. Uh, and it's. Uh, doing very well. Good. And you're both happy. You? We're both happy. Sure. Yeah. 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 And that's great. Thank you. That's one pound nineteen, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, right. Thanks very much. Bye bye, bye, -bye now. I'd like to welcome to Prescott Church Finland School, Mr. Roberts, who in fact was a governor of the school some years ago, and uh, I'm sure that you're going to have lots of questions to put to Mr. Roberts about all the things he knows concerning Prescott, because Mr. Roberts <coughs> has compiled, is it two books? Three. Three books about Prescott, and I'm sure you'll find it fascinating for him to be here today and share with us some of that information. I'd also like to introduce you to Mr. Melia and Mike, who's with us, and uh, thank them for all the work they're doing with regard to the history of Prescott. So thank you very much, Mr. Roberts, thank for coming you today. Now, children, I don't know if you have any questions you'd like to put to Mr. Roberts. When was you born? <laughs> 83 years ago. Did you go to this school? Did I come to this school? No. No, I, I, in the days when I started school, I, I belonged to what was then called the board school, that was the council school, and it's, the building's still there. It's a, it's a tertiary college at the moment on Warrington Road in Prescott. Yes, ma'am? Why did you decide to choose Prescott to um, study it? Why did I start to study it? Well, I was always interested in history, for one thing, and it seemed to me that the best place to start was the place where I was born. And uh, I began that, first of all with the church, and then with the, with the town itself, and it developed from there. Yes? Where did you get your information about Prescott from? Pardon me? Where did you get your information about Prescott from? From my own knowledge, from things that I'd seen during my rather uh, long life, and, and from uh, books uh, available in all the libraries, including the Mosley uh, Social Studies section of Mosley, uh, Mosley Library, where I got a lot of papers. Yes, dear? How many times have you visited this school? How many times? Yes. This one? Well, I was here when the school was open, when uh, the right Reverend Stuart Blanche, who was Bishop of Liverpool at the time, opened it, and I understand that's 25 years ago uh, in, in this next year. So how many times? I wouldn't like to know. But as a governor, I was here for most of the meetings. Shore Lane was in fact a lane. There were no houses in it. You just uh, joined the road at the top by the railway bridge and walk all the way down until you joined uh, uh, Dragon Lane at the other end and it was a farm. I think it was Cook's farm. And the other thing about that is that the, the, the Cook people uh, are now butchers, or were, in, in Prescott after they finished as, as farmers. I did very much indeed. I met a lot of very interesting people, including the, the headmistress, who, who was a, a teacher then, and later a deputy head, and, and then uh, very ably appointed head teacher. Did you know Mr. Bell? 
then I, oh, I knew Mr. Berry very well indeed. I knew his predecessor, Mr. Bonney, too. In fact, I went to school with Mr. Bonney. As you, as you can tell, it's a long time ago. Yeah? How long has the BICC been there? How long has BICC been there? Eh? In Prescott, you mean? Since about 1896. It started the... Probably a little later than that. It started when Prescott Watch Factory uh, finished, and a lot of the employees, the skilled people, came to work for BICC. So it's a long time ago, and it's been gone a long time too. Uh, 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 town, and it was a you know the name of the origin of the name of Prescott. It's Priest Coat, and the original name is called Church Lee. And the Lee part of that name is a clearing in the forest, and this is all forest. Ground. And they built, it. they cleared that uh, uh, ground to put the first church in Prescott on that site, and that was sometime in the first century, I think. And they, they gave uh, Prescott its name in the first place, as I've just said, Church Lee, which was a clearing in the forest for a church which was built of wood, by the way. And then they changed it to Priest Coat, which is the habitation of the priests, and that became Prescott many, many centuries ago. You've been inside the Baptist Church, haven't you? And you'll find that an effigy of one of the founders, John Oakley, whose effigy stands embedded in the wall. And it used to be said that when the clock struck 12 o'clock, John Oakley walked around the church. Interesting. Now, uh, Mr. Roberts, we would like to sing a song to you. That's very nice. This is a song that's being written by Mr. Media, and the children have been practicing, and we hope to uh, give a, a good performance. I'm sure you will. So, if you'd like to stay seated, we can get into position. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Shall we thank Mr. Roberts for coming today? I think you've all found it very interesting. Perhaps give him a round of applause. Stewardship Committee uh, fundraising business. Yeah. And he became chairman of the thing. I was recorder, a, a job that I relinquished uh, some, some time well, ago. How many years ago was this? It must be before 1966. Yes. yes. Because my wife, was, my first wife, was, was involved in the thing. Yeah. And, and uh, you were always the tower of strength. And when Dr. Sam gave, Dr. Dr. Sam gave up and Dr. Pitton came, That's right. we transferred our allegiance to another doctor and you were the obvious choice and he took on and put me on yeah, the panel. That's right. That's right. And did a well of a job too. Yeah. Not that I ever needed a lot of attention, <laughs> but, but you, you were always on hand. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. It was great. And you've been a tower of strength as far as the church is concerned because you well, always I, know. I, I like to help. Well, I know you. We all like to do our bit. We do. Uh, our, our talents are many and varied, and, uh, and we, uh, we, we mix them all up. But this is this is a, a, a source of great income. Uh, and it's, it's, it's oh yes, you're doing great. It's isn't it? Thousands job. of pounds a year. Absolutely. Yes, okay. yeah, I've just bought well, a few pounds of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. Yeah. The town is concerned. Would you say that it's? Oh, I think things have improved. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, well fed. We don't see vitamin deficiency. You know, no. this sort of thing. Sure. Uh, um, well, you're a good advert for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, no, it's a, it's a healthy town. If you stop smoking, now then you don't. Yeah. I, you're a smoker. A pipe smoker. Oh, I don't mind the pipes. It's no, the no. ciggies that. Uh, oh, I don't bother with yeah. the ciggies. I, 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 I shout I, at my patients. Well, I gave those at years ago. But I see a patient. I, I remark on the card smoking. I show them. <laughs> I said, next time you come in, I'm going to mention smoking to you. And every time you come in, I'm going to mention smoking till I can cross it out. Oh yes, doctor. Yes, I quite agree with you. But tell if I to come in to see me now. <laughs> uh, yes, oh, that's great. Uh, yes, it's good. Peter Kelly has, over the years, been a loyal servant and freeman of the town. Uh, could you start by telling us what it was like to be made for man of Prescott? Well, in the first place it was a very big surprise. And yet I thought it was a very unique honour in that they've never made a Freeman before in all its thousand year history in Prescott. Mm. And you do get other honours, for instance, uh, uh, politicians get into the uh, New Year's honours list and birthday honours list. And although I was Adam's personal organiser through four governments, four so, premierships, he, he never entered me into any of them because he had a policy of not entering his personal friends and I was in that category. So that in itself was a great honour for me, for the Prime Minister to say, Peter's my personal friend, you see. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, but nowadays, when you see especially the ones that, uh, uh, the lists that are going out now in the Liverpool Echo, 
footballers or anybody, pop singers, the lot can get into the honours list now. So to get me made Freeman, I think it was very, very grand of my fellow men in Prescott to do that. And to think of it, because it had never entered my head in all the time I've been in, in public life. That, mm. In fact, I've never even thought the words Freeman and Prescott. Mm. So it was a wonderful surprise. The only disappointment was I, I got struck ill and couldn't go to the presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my wife had to go and pick it up for me. Does it allow you any privileges at all? Not nowadays, in Victorian times and beyond. The, uh, uh, you were indeed a free man, you were free of paying rates, you were free of paying tolls and tithes, and you know, most places had to, um, they, m most local authorities got their revenue from charging you a tithe to go through the streets, they have to maintain the roads. And, and so you were free of all that. Yeah. And of course there is that old pun that a free man would be able to drive his sheep along the highway without pain. Right. But not, not, not bought me the sheep yet. Yeah. You were born up the Alps, wasn't you? I wasn't born up the Alps, I was born in what they call Snig Lane, it's Sewer so. Street now. Yeah. I, uh, but my mother died when I was only about 12 months old. And my father moved to Bretherton Road, which is, which is we call the Alps. Why was it? Call that. Well, it was called the house because it, it was a patch of land dug out of a, a, a farm beyond the eagle and child. It was all farmland from there right through to there. And um, of course, in, in the country areas, uh, when it snowed, the snow stayed uh, longer than it did in, in, the, in the town, you say. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it was, uh, if it snowed in Prescott, there was always snow on Brotherton Road and Southern Road mm -hmm. for a week longer than the rest of the. Mm -hmm. The, uh, and that's why it was called the Alps. <laughs> they, but they invented these things themselves, you see. Yeah, yeah. Another thing adversity does for you, gives you a little bit of wit. <laughs> now, could you tell me how you got started um, in your political life? How well, you? I was always uh, interested in politics when I was going to school, and I was into the subjects that I was good at at school were the subjects that you really needed in politics. For instance, I was always very good at geography, history, and English language, you say. And uh, on top of that, I was uh, a rather good church boy. I was, I was a, a Catholic and I was an altar boy. And I used to go and serve mass with the old Jesuits every morning, seven days a week, every morning before going on to school. And um, there was the same old... Uh, Lessons read out, same old epistles and gospels, and love thy neighbour as thyself, and you know, and all the rest of it. And I, I, even as a child going to school, I thought, well, there has to be a practical side to this as well as just speaking it. And so when I left school, the first thing I did was try and get into a political organisation, mm -hmm. and I, I did manage it through the ILP. Mm -hmm. The Labour Party itself didn't have a juvenile section. So they couldn't take me until I was about, well, I sneaked him when I was 16, but you weren't supposed to go until you were 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. so, but that's how I come to anti politics. It was through the old IRP because it was the only uh, labour movement organisation that had a juvenile side mm -hmm. in Prescott. Mm -hmm. And the site was just back of the Crown, where now is the door. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Can you tell me how you arrived at the decision to demolish the town hall? Yes. In common with a lot of property around there, uh, it was in uh, a sorry state, uh, along with the, the houses that went to the back of it. And there was a feeling among the people of Prescott, and indeed among a lot of the councillors, uh, that we'd like to preserve it because it had one of the finest salt asps, as you call it, that's the round bay, going three floors. Uh, in Lancashire, and uh, in fact the historians had mentioned what a wonderful thing it was, like as far as a journey moon. And it was unique in that it was the only town hall in the north of England that had little shops underneath. Yeah. It just yeah. shows how uh, enterprising the old people of Prescott was at the time when they built it in 1749, was it? Right. So people like the Historic Society, they think um, it perhaps should have been saved? Well, they? the Historic well, Society, I'm saved. very much afraid of a lot of talk. Now, I was on the council and I was one of those that had to take the actions. 
Now we brought in consultants rather than just tear it down willy nilly. <coughs> and there were in consultants. We kept setting it on fire. It will you take, say. Yes, it will take five thousand pounds. Now I appreciated that myself because not only did I have a brother who worked on the council and who was in and out of that town hall, but I was also <coughs> Uh, chairman of the Highways Lighting and Open Spaces Committee, which put all such things like that, and Grosvenor Road Yard, and the engineering surveyor under my surveillance. So we brought the matter before the council, and we said, well, £5,000 in 1950, an awful lot of money. Mm. Now there are some councils, big enough, say St. Helens or Liverpool, or the, any of the modern boroughs, who would have found that money and preserved it. For instance, it needed complete new floors and ceilings. It was many, many years before we pulled it down uh, that they had never allowed any workman to climb the stores because of the danger and the problem of having to pay them compensation if anything happened to them. So that's how bad it was inside, you see. Right. So anyway, it would cost £5,000. And the council at that time was up to its neck in debt to the Public Works Loan Board for all the new housing estates we were building up and down Prescott Post War. And I must say this for us, although I was a member of the Old Union District Council and blowing me own trumpet, for the size of us, there was only 17, 000, uh, 17 members on, on, the, on the council, uh, we, we put up a greater number of council houses per head of population or per thousand population of any town in South Lancashire. And so priorities had to be looked after. And they decided that the best thing to do was to pull it down. Now, there was also uh, a su uh, subsidiary reason to that, to pulling it down. Prescott is a through town. It's smack in the middle of the Merseyside uh, conurbation. And there's an awful lot of traffic used Prescott, as you know yourself, even today. And it's the centre of a whole conurbation of huge metropolises. And uh, so we needed to widen some of our roads. For instance, uh, Church Street, we widened that. Indeed, I widened it as chairman of highways when I, when I built the, uh, the bus station. I got told off about that too, incidentally. Can't please everyone. But it was my decision, that bus station. Mm. Now, it would have meant pulling one side of marketplace down anywhere. Now, the question that arose in our minds was, was it better to put that, pull that downside and widen marketplace, or pull the other side down, which was also all Georgian, and old town shops, mm. you see, running from the, uh, the uh, Red Lion uh, to Eccleston Street. So we decided, in our wisdom or otherwise, uh, to concentrate on the other side of the road and pull that down. Now, <clears throat> whether we were really good for the people of Prescott in our decision or not, I don't know. <clears throat> but the Heritage, National Heritage Council, gave us an award for what we did. Because not only did we put the town hall down, we did, we took the opportunity of cleaning up all the old church all, all around that east and south part of the church and we removed the monument to there and we, we, we got a heritage uh, prize for that. Uh, we got one and the church got one and our chief architect got one. So if the people of Prescott uh, say, well, you did wrong in putting that town all down, all the people visiting us and the people around us looking in uh, said we did a good thing. Mm. So, mm. now, <clears throat> I say, if a thing's so dilapidated that it needs to be pulled down, well, I say, we, w the reason why we're here for a thousand years is we've moved with the times, and I've always moved with the times. Mm. If it needed pulling down, pull it down. Simple as that. Mm. <clears throat> Every house becomes well, historic. Have you made any decisions that you now regret type of thing that you probably over the years any decision I made that oh, the uh, all the council made that uh, I regret there are, there are several little parts which I feel several little parts of Prescott which I feel could have been preserved 
For instance, there's one little speck in Prescott, which I thought was a, a, a lovely little square called Derby Square. Now, I know there are streets or houses in Prescott that the old Prescott Council preserved, including this. And I didn't think this street was anywhere near as pretty to look at, as was well preserved, as Derby Square. And they pulled down Derby Square, and it was left derelict for ages before the uh, Housing Association moved in and uh, built it up. Very nicely, I agree. Very nicely. But that's one little spot in Prescott that we could have preserved. And I would have preserved. Mm. Being in public life uh, isn't all shows. It has its little rewards, you know. Mm. Uh, even for mayors and children of the councils. Uh, they do give you some little recompense at the end of your year of office. For instance, I was referred to these. This was what I got from my service to the Prescott Urban District Council when the government fold made us fold up and uh, we uh, moved into Nowsley. The people of Prescott being sick of the arrangement forced the government ultimately to give us our council back and I was very privileged to become Prescott's inaugural mayor because he was always an Urban District Council chairman before that. Mm -hmm. So I have also the privilege of saying I was Prescott's first mayor. Now this is what I got when I uh, was inaugurated. Uh, I didn't really expect to be the mayor again so very soon, but five years afterwards, uh, in 1989, they made me mayor again. And so, of course, they duplicated the thing. But, um, not only in that aspect, but in other aspects of our work, we've had, um, we've had a, a great deal uh, of rewards, really. Reward in my estimation. For instance, when I uh, was made the uh, Freeman of Prescott, uh, one of the happiest aspects of it was the, the wonderful letters of congratulations and cards that I received, and letters from people who I thought had gone out of my life and they're suddenly res resurrected. Uh, th there's two typical here. Uh, there's one from Harry Wilson, and, and my association with Harry is well known, so I won't go into that. But it says, Dear Peter, it gives me very great pleasure to send you this message for the 8th of October, when you are to become the Freeman of Prescott. It also gives me another opportunity to express to you my warm appreciation for the very staunch support you have given the party over so many years and to me personally when I was the MP for the earlier. Your contribution to Prescott has been outstanding and you very much deserve this recognition of all your hard work and concern for Prescott. I hope that you have a very happy and enjoyable day on the 8th and I am sure that the ceremony will be a memorable one. I shall be thinking of you, and both Mary and I send our warmest good wishes to you. Yours sincerely, Harold. Very good. And that was, uh, I thought that was very, very kind, because Harold, as you know, in during the last couple of years, has gone into mm. really poor health, yeah. and I would never expect one from him. The other one I was very proud of, I've got a lot, of course, but the other one I, I, I give great pleasure great uh, pride to and that is from the person who succeeded Harold as the leader in, in the House of Commons, or, or ultimately succeeded him, and that's the present John Smith. Mm. I certainly didn't expect anything from John Smith, but rather surprisingly, he didn't send it to me, he sent it to the present leader of the Prescott Town Council, Derek McEgan, and that's all the nicer still. Mm. He says, I with your privilege, Dear Derek, I was very glad to hear that on Thursday, 8th of October, Prescott Town Council will be presenting the freedom of the town to Mr. Peter Kelly. I write, uh, I write as leader of the Labour Party to say how pleased I am that this honour has been conferred on such a valued member of the party. He has been active in the Labour Party all his life and was, of course, Adam Wilson's election agent in every election he fought until 1983. As a town councillor and a member of the old Prescott Urban District Council, he made a major contribution to the public life 
of his area, as well as being mayor of the town on several occasions. Peter Kelly is an outstanding example of the values for which the Labour Party stands, and the whole party sends him our sincere congratulations and our best wishes. Yours sincerely, John Smith. And I thought those two letters summed up the feelings of all my friends. Mm -hmm. And that's all that the board have ever looked for. Yeah. After all this, I must say uh, a word about the enormous amount of help Hilda's been to me throughout the whole of my political career for the last 48 years. Uh, she has on three occasions, three years as mayor, mayor as, had to stand in on many occasions uh, when I have had other appointments and uh, she's had to go it alone, as they say. Just as she had to go it alone uh, last October when she had to turn up and receive the scroll on my behalf. So, <coughs> in many respects, Hilda is as good a public figure as I have been, and she's not had my training. I do owe Hilda an awful lot of thanks for her help in being my mayoress three times and by standing by me throughout an awful long life in politics and in public life. Unhappy, of course, the, the, the country knows she fell and broke her shoulder, mm -hmm. and so uh, there you are, even that's gone on. To the history book now, <laughs> and whether Hilda like likes it or not, she is. For me, yeah. married to a politician, yeah, what to do with <laughs> um, well, exciting, but yeah. uh, um, not much companionship yeah. uh, in the things that I'm interested in. Mm. Like, mm. Uh, yeah. you know. Uh, well, you've got a lot of interests yourself, haven't you? Yeah, I have my own interests, you see, antiques and things. And uh, of course, he, he doesn't normally come out with me. He's going out with me now because I've done this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I think he used to do a bit of painting, didn't he? I used to I used to do some painting. I can't do anything now with this. Mm. So, You've done a picture, is it marketplace? Yeah, yeah, marketplace. Because we started off our marriage there. And yes. it's our very, first home was in marketplace. Yeah, this shop just here. Marketplace is very special to me. The Elegor was where, mine. Our first home was there. That's where we started mm. we were in, our marriage. We were in digs and awful lot before we got there. Yeah. And, yeah. and our only daughter <coughs> was born was there. Born there. Yeah. So, so Marketplace didn't mean an awful lot to me. It's so. very sentimental to me, that. Mm. <laughs> One, two, three, what are you going to do? Well, nobody ever wants to leave Blesker once they're in it. So I've seen you, I'll play you in the leaving of 